Hi everyone. Um, so as promised, this is the next video where we'll be looking at how we will try kind of determine the distribution of these allomorphs. So this is just kind of an example um, on the next slide here where we'll talk about how the phonetic environment um, can help us decide which allomorph of a morpheme is going to occur. And this is usually determined by the sounds that directly precede or follow something. So just like um, we saw with phonology, usually it's going to be the sound that precedes or follows something that determines what form it will take. So in the language Ilocano, um, they have what's called a verbalizer affix, which basically will take a noun and somehow change it into a verb. So, for example, we have the word ruar for outside. This word can take the prefix e to become e ruar, meaning take something outside. We also have detoy, meaning here. Um, it can take the, uh, the affix e again, e detoy, which will mean put something here. There's ngato, high or up, ingato, or put something up. So basically adding this e uh, prefix to a word means put something at that location, whatever location the root word is describing. Then we also have these three words, abut meaning whole, uneg meaning inside, and abe meaning side. So this takes a different form of the prefix e that we saw in the first four words. And basically, despite having this different form, the y instead of e, <coughs> it gets the same meaning. So abut becomes yabut. So hole becomes put something in a hole. Uneg or inside becomes uneg or put something inside. Um, Abe or side becomes yabe or place something beside or compare. So basically we have <coughs> the e and the y, <coughs> two different forms of that same verbalizer. So try to think about um, what sounds <coughs> are occurring in the environment of the verbalizer and see if you can come up with a reason that we might have one form of the verbalizer in one place and another form in another place. So see, basically see what do these four words, ruar, detoy, ngato, and baba have in common. And then what do these three words, abut, uneg, and abe have in common that is different from the first four words. So try thinking about that a little bit. Um, maybe pause the video if you need to. Um, but I'm going to kind of go on and talk about it. If you look at Ruar, Detoy, Ngato, and Baba, well, they all start with a consonant. Abut, Uneg, and Abe all start with a vowel. So basically what it looks like what's happening is that we have, if the word starts with a consonant, then it gets that E form of the verbalizer. If it starts with a vowel, it gets the Y form of the verbalizer. So it looks like there is some kind of, phonolo <coughs> some kind of phonological condition that's telling us which form of the verbalizer to take here. So some affixes um, will kind of cause large phonological changes in the root word. So the affixes we've looked at so far, um, those allomorphs have been um, generally just adding on to the start or the end of a word or the middle or maybe both, um, but there are affixes or allomorphs that can kind of change the root itself. So these aren't um, these aren't really things that we've seen yet, um, but we definitely have them <coughs> in English. These things are still considered affixes, even if no extra segments or no extra sounds are added. So there's just a sound change, but not a sound being added. Um, so here's some examples from English. We have the word mouse, and it takes the um, plural 
allomorph mice. So it doesn't add on a sound. It just changes the internal sound. So that vowel ow changes to e. We have the word uh, man, which changes to men. Goose changes to geese. We have sing, sang, sung. We have break and broke. Um, and Geni actually does this as well, except with tone instead of with, uh, ra with the quality sound of the vowel changing, the actual tone of the vowel changes. So they have one tone meaning cook, another tone on the vowel meaning cooks, and then another tone on another vowel meaning will cook. So basically by changing the tone of the vowel, that's how they are showing the, um, the different tenses. Okay, so that's kind of the end of talking about allomorphs. Um, so in the next lecture, which uh, I think will close off the week, um, we'll be looking at a few topics just to kind of uh, show you what else we talk about in morphology.